Uh, diffusion and osmosis, two very important concepts to understand and to be able to distinguish the difference between the two. Quick summary is diffusion is movement of particles from a high concentration to a lower concentration to make it evenly um, spaced out here. And osmosis is the movement or change of water through a semi-permeable membrane. Let's dive into more detail here. Starting with diffusion. So diffusion, here we have a bunch of blue molecules here. Our extracellular space, they're diffusing across our semi-permeable lipid bilayer. And over time, they become evenly distributed in the outside and inside of the cell. You can see here um, our little tan um, spheres here, slowly diffusing throughout these molecules, become more evenly spaced out. So it's the net movement of a substance from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration down a concentration gradient. So high concentration to low concentration. So you could think of this if you're um, going to go watch a movie and you're waiting to um, get into the movie theater. Uh, they have the doors closed. You have a very high concentration. Then you're passing through the doorway here ultimately getting an even amount of hopefully that are on the inside uh, and on the outside there. So that can be a way of everyone that's in the movie theater and those that are still outside waiting for other movies to come on. That could be a way to think about this diffusion process. The key part here is it's a selectively permeable uh, light layer. Now this diffusion process, it can be simple, channeled, or carrier me mediated. The general process is the same. Uh, channel and carry mediated diffusion is specific and subject to saturation. So what these two require is this protein channel, for example, or this carrier protein. Simple diffusion just occurs with no energy and it just kind of happens. Way to think about simple diffusion, if someone sprays perfume in one side of the room, eventually it'll work its way all the way over to the other side of the room. Channel or carry mediated involves these carrier proteins, and we're looking more specifically at a cellular example here. Here, specific to size, charge, and interactions with the channel. So, example, this channel is transferring these small um, green molecules and not these lighter or oval-shaped ones. It's very specific to just these types of molecules. Um, this other carrier protein is specific to the lighter green oval-shaped ones. What means it's, when I say subject to saturation, making the channels rate limiting, is if there's only a couple of these proteins in the plasma membrane, it's going to limit, and there's only going to be so many that can get through at any one particular time, subject to saturation. If they're all busy doing their job, uh, it's going to be slow um, to get all those molecules to diffuse across. Here we're looking at that saturation point. If it's not a lot of um, solutes, then they can all diffuse quite well. So diffusion in solutions, all molecules are constantly in motion. Remember, only at absolute zero are things um, not moving. We had yet to reach absolute zero. Molecules in solution move randomly, and the random motion causes the mixing. Concentration is the amount of solute in a solvent, and concentration gradient is the more solute in one part than another. So we see the example here. We had a piece of uh, drop of dye. Here it's very concentrated. Slowly over time it diffuses without any mixing. The simple moving of those molecules around cause that dye to get moved around and to mix. Same thing here. Dye crystals in this case are at the bottom and they're getting evenly mixed over time. Now if we heat up the, in this case if this is water, if we heat up the water this can occur at a faster rate. Diffusion in solutions, our solutes move down the concentration gradient, molecules mix randomly, solute spreads throughout the solvent, and eliminates concentration gradients. Here we have a concentration gradient. Over time, we have basically an equal amount on both the left and right side. And this occurs just through the movement of the water molecules. Factors affecting our diffusion rates, as you can see here. Distance the particle has to move. So going back to our um, example of the perfume, if it's a very large room, it's going to take a longer time for those further away in the room to be able to smell the perfume. Molecule size. The small molecules will move faster. Big molecules take a lot of energy to move and they can be a lot slower. Small molecules can move a lot faster and diffuse a lot uh, quicker. Temperature. 
as we mentioned before. More heat, the faster the motion. Gradient size, the difference between high and low concentrations. So the greater the difference, in this case, the more concentrated the dye is, um, that's going to affect our diffusion rate. There's a, the difference between high and low concentrations. If it's very dilute, um, it's going to take a little bit longer for it to kind of work its way through. And electrical forces, opposites attract, like charges repel, if we're dealing with something that's positive and negative charges. So diffusion across the membrane, each solute diffuses down its own concentration gradient. There'll be a net diffusion of the purple molecules towards the left in the example here. Uh, you can see they're moving towards the left uh, through the solute that was initially greater on the left side. So here we have 20% solute, 10% solute. You can see the movement in this case is going to be mainly to the left. This leads to dynamic equilibrium, and this is the solute molecules continue to cross membrane but at equal rates in both directions. So at equilibrium, I don't want you to think things stop moving. A, the molecules are still moving, but for every one that moves to the left, one moves to the right. So there's no net change. This is dynamic equilibrium. No net change in the um, amount of purple molecules on the left and right, even though one might be moving to the left, one moves to the right. Same thing with the water molecules. One moves to the right, one moves to the left. So there's still things that are moving, but the net effect is zero. Facilitated diffusion. This is diffusion of cells through a semi permeable membrane with the help of special transport proteins. Large polar molecules and ions cannot pass through the phospholipid bilayer. They require these proteins. This is the facilitated diffusion. Typically, teachers were called faculty, and we're facilitating this is where faculty comes through. We're facilitating your learning process. So if you need a little extra help, uh, we are like the carrier proteins in the phospholipid bilayer, helping move this confusing amount of information randomly around through and getting it ideally to you where you can learn it and then use it for your own um, future studies. Facilitated diffusion, two types of transport proteins here help ions and large polar molecules diffuse through cell membranes. Channel proteins provide a narrow channel for the substances to pass through. Care proteins physically bind to one side of the membrane and release it on the other side. So you can see here is our binding that's occurring, carrying it through and transporting it to this side. This is an example of our channel proteins. It's simply just a channel uh, allowing these red molecules to be able to pass through. Carrier proteins are physically grabbing and carrying them across from one side to the other. This is an example of, of a channel protein here. So the last part of our facilitated diffusion, it's specific. Each channel is specific to transport certain ions or molecules only. Passive, the direction of net movement is always down the concentration gradient and saturates. So once all transport proteins are in use, the rate of diffusion can no longer increase beyond that point. So it very specifically in helping students. It's passive. Um, it's down always the concentration gradient from an area of um, higher concentration to lower, and saturates. All the transport proteins are in use, that's as quick as the rate can go. If all the teachers are busy helping students, that's as quick as we can help people. Osmosis is a little different. Diffusion of solvent across the semi permeable membrane in living system, the solvent is always water. So osmosis is basically diffusion of water across the semi permeable membrane here. Sorry, that got cut off. Here we have the amount of molecules on the left and right staying the same, but we have the amount of water shifting. The water is trying to make the concentration of each equal, even though they can't pass through this particular semi-permeable membrane. Uh, osmosis, again, that movement of water in this case for biological systems, more solute molecules, lower concentration of water molecules. The membrane must be free permeable to water, and selectively permeable to the solutes. In this case, the solutes can't move, but the water can. Water molecules diffuse across the membrane towards the solution with more solutes. Volume increases on the side with more solutes. We see here, here's some more solutes, here's less. Water's going to move across because the, um, in this case, the dissolved salt cannot. We see an increase in the height of water in this tube versus this side. Same thing here, we have more molecules on this side, and over time, to get to part two, more water moves across. So diffusion and osmosis, a great comparison between the two here. Think of dye molecules simply spreading out. Osmosis is the movement of water. Here, an important concept, concentration gradients tend to even out. 
in the absence of a membrane, diffusion eliminates concentration gradients. Here it's evenly distributed, a homogeneous mixture. When different solute concentrations exist on either side of the selectively permeable membrane, osmosis moves water through the membrane to equalize the concentration gradients. Again, in this case here, we have our equal amounts of blue and yellow. Here we're causing this mixing to occur, and we're getting green here. Shows here different water heights again. We're trying to make the same number of molecules per area on both sides. As a result, we reduce the water and it moves over to this side. Here we're just equally spacing things out. This is like students when they enter a room, they all equally space out over time. Here we're keeping the same number of students on the left and the right side, and we're simply giving these students a bigger room, and these a smaller room, to make the amount of area or square footage that a student may have equal in both cases. Hopefully that was helpful in describing the difference and similarities between diffusion and osmosis and how it relates to biology.